Hey guys, Carol 97 again, once again with some more new loot. And this month was a very exciting one. Starting off with the Victory Dash Gundam. Something we all expected to happen eventually. It's the Victory Gundam with the Hexa Head and the Dash Pack. Oh, opening it up. And what I'm totally gonna do is just make one normal Hexa Victory Gundam and then make a Victory Gundam with the Dash Pack. So I'll probably give my already existing Victory Gundam the Dash Pack, because if I'm not mistaken, I really applied uh, some marking stickers to mark it as a Victory Gundam, and then I'll give this guy uh, the marking stickers for the Hexa Gundam. And the marking stickers I'm talking about are the marking stickers from the Victory Gundam weapon set. I was going to say accessory pack, as you also get um, a few other things that aren't necessarily weapon related, like an extra head and stickers for essentially, well, marking stickers for essentially all the machines. So that's going to be really fun to build. But next up, bam, Master Great Double X. For some reason, I still haven't picked up the Master Great X Gundam, well, Master Great Gundam X, but just looking at the pictures of this and having already seen a little bit of what's inside, I'm definitely gonna pick up the Gundam X Gundam whenever there's a slow month. Because, man, I mean, this by itself doesn't really look that great for the solar panels, but I spotted some stickers inside. are gonna make it look extremely good. Let's see some gold parts even. Though it does seem, yeah, that looks like the yeah, kind of cheaper gold. Would have been cooler if they were actually plated. For a master grade, that would have been really cool. Doesn't look, no, it's just that standard molded gold, which, eh, nah. nah. But hey, fortunately, all the attention is gonna go to those solar panels on the wings. And let's see. Uh, there we go. That is going to look very interesting. What the hell is this? The Art of Gundam. Oh, yeah, that thing. Oh, well. Let's see, one hell of a manual, too. This is... Well, this thing looks like it's gonna be a hell of a lot of fun to build. Now I hope it's just going to close up again. Uh, let's see. There. Up it goes. Then the final new kit I got is the Wing Gundam Zero Hono. And, well, the main reason I got this thing is it's red and white, it's a Wing Zero, and I wonder how customizable it's going to be out of the box. Like, how many spare parts are we going to get from the normal Wing Zero kiss, I think this would really look awesome uh, if I could essentially make the normal Wing Zero. But looking at this, it doesn't look like there are going to be a lot of... In fact, a lot of these parts seem to be completely new, if not all of them. Well, yeah, looking at them, this thing looks essentially like a completely new mold. Well, well, well. Now I'm suddenly very impressed with this thing. And yet another, the art of Gundam. Well, once quite ah, uh, way to go. Uh, immediately advertising what you can get somewhere else. Now I did also order this, but for some reason, um, on my entire order, if I added uh, the Hano set, the shipping went up like crazy, so I had to exclude one item, and unfortunately, the Hano parts were what I had to exclude. 
Now let's see, this doesn't, this is very interesting. Completely new mold, eh? Well, actually looking at it, probably should have known, but still. A lot of these Gun and Bill Fighter kits tend to be complete remolds. With a few extra parts that are there, so... For the Wings of Hano, they really did go all out. Color me impressed on this thing. And the question just is, what am I going to be able to do with this to make it look a bit less like, um... It really focuses on those orange parts. I'm not a huge fan of the orange parts, but other than that, I really like the way the chest looks, the head looks, um, well, those swords, yeah, I guess I, you can put them on the back and look pretty good there, so maybe I'll see what I can do with that with the extra add-on parts. Now for some older Gundam kits, the Goof Fly type. I've been waiting a, while, a good while for this while I was in back order, but I finally got it, the Goof Fly type. It might not be able to really fly, but it's a very damn cool kit and a very damn cool mobile suit nonetheless. Looks like it's... especially the shield's going to be pretty paint heavy. Also, um, one of the Gatling hands is molded in the right color, but I think overall this is going to look fantastic. One thing I always find funny is this thing is supposed to fly, yet they added a giant Gatling gun on it. Though I guess they might have added this after they kind of realized that it's not really going to fly anyway. So, yeah, let's just make it a very good hover mobile suit with a giant badass Gatling gun in order to make it work. And frankly, that is what makes it pretty damn cool, the giant Gatling gun. The next up, uh, <laughs> the next up, um, up next is one machine that Ron Moral is very famous for. I was watching Gundam The Origin and I immediately had to buy something Ron Moral related. Of course, we all know Ron Moral loves piloting the Zaku. And no, seriously, I did get a Zaku. See, I do like that they used to do this with the old Moss Raid kits. Um, now I wonder when they actually stopped doing this, because it's very nice quality, quite thick cardboard. So, putting that aside, well, the actual machine, well, the actual molecule itself isn't going to be super impressive. This is one of the earliest monster rates out there. So, it's going to be significantly less good uh, than the RE model, because they are releasing now. Let's see, like, where are the parts that it really shows, like, um... Especially in the articulation, it's really going to show. And then also, uh, where was the Heat Hawk? I'm not sure if I already spoke. Yeah, the Heat Hawk was molded in blue and all sorts of stuff that you are you're probably going to have to paint. Like a lot of spare parts uh, from the Zaku 2. So I wonder how overall this is going to look and how it's going to feel. Because the earlier Moss Grates, they tend to be pretty. Um, well, how to put it best nowadays. Uh, nowadays they feel pretty old and pretty obsolete, really. But it's a Zaku, it's something Ramaral piloted. And at the very least, we get a very nicely detailed figure of Ramaral. So that's the <laughs> close up. So that's the last mobile suit I got, but I figured I'd get some extra accessories for the guys. First up, system weapon number six, uh, with the Raketen Bazooka and the Zaku type shield. The Zaku type shield is absolutely gonna go to my Zaku 3. I've been looking at him and I felt that he could use some extra protection. Then I saw that this essentially comes with all the add-on parts you'd want for Zaku shield. Uh, you have the triple spikes, you have four of those uh, storm fouts you can put on there. And you can even put the raketen bazooka you get with this thing on there. So, 
This definitely looks pretty damn awesome. And I, oh, you can even put uh, some of the other stuff from uh, weapon systems on here. So that's pretty cool. The Raket and Bazooka, Raket and Buzz. I'm not sure which one, uh, which one of my machines is going to get that. I'm pretty sure something like that looks good on all mobile suits. The next weapon sets I got weren't from Bandai, but actually from Tommy Tech, uh, Little Armory. Now this is the main reason I got it, the M240G. Turns out this uh, thing was actually made in Belgium. The actual machine gun, not the model kit. So hey, and when I saw this, I immediately thought of how this would look on a gym custom. And well, 112 scale tends to work out very well with 144 scale Gundam kits. So I immediately had to get this and I immediately had to build it. And it turns out, after a bit of modifying it, it fits absolutely well. It fits well into the hands, there's still a little gap there and also the stock, I had to modify that a little bit to bring it upwards because otherwise the stock would simply, um, well it just couldn't hold on to it because the stock would be too low uh, because of Gundams do tend to have pretty bulky arms and this is actually designed to work with Figmas, not sure if you're saying it here but they have uh, explicitly mention it that these are kind of made to work with Figma. So that's really cool. If you want to give your Figmas or your 144 scale Gundam kit some extra firepower, these are very nice. I was also pleasantly surprised by the quality of these and they have some very nice fine detail on them and also went, it, it all went together really well. So I'm very pleasantly surprised with the little armory line. Hadn't heard of it before, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna look up some weapons, let's see if HLJ has some 112 scale weapons in stock, because, well, they work well with one or more 44 scale gun kits, and I found these, and for 1,200 yen, I decided, you know what, let's see what they're like. And the best comparison I can make is that they felt very much like uh, a Kotobukiya kit. Whoa! Well, well, well. This one comes with a lot of markings. Um, the FN there, well, uh, the MG240G didn't actually come with any marking stickers, but this one comes with quite a lot of them. And they're normal stickers. I think this feels like normal stickers, so. So you're gonna have to cut them because they don't look. I'll have to look. Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to look into that um, before I do the review, but. Other than that, uh, it's molded in green, pretty much the right color, so very impressed with the little armory line. Though some of their model kits do seem to be kind of expensive for what you're getting. And uh, the MD240 over there is a pretty big machine, same goes for this bazooka, but they, they've also got handguns for the same price. Seems like uh, 1,200 yen is like their golden price range. Anything they're selling, 1,200 yen, whether it's a small handgun or a giant as Gatling gun or bazooka. Sufficient to say, I was very excited about the MG240. That, even with the Victory Dash Gundam and the Gundam XX, might have been the thing I was looking forward to the most because I was really hoping that was going to look awesome with my gym custom. And it did. Then the next thing I got, hobby, um, Dengeki Hobby number four with the amazing Lev D parts. This was also something from last month, but the same thing happened as this month where I had to exclude one model kit or just one thing in order to drastically reduce the shipping costs. And you know, I can wait another month if it saves me 20 euros. Unsurprisingly, all molded in white. Oh, just wants to come out. There we go. And well, once again, now we got both of these things. I do look forward to how they're going to look complete. Now let's check that one. And also, uh, by pure coincidence, come on, close. By pure coincidence, they actually have a piece about Little Armory uh, on page 235 or two, no wait, it was a bit, 
they did have something about little armies. Maybe it was 225. Ah, there we go. So I just got them and, well, this turns out. One thing I have to say about uh, little armory is that way to go marketing with those box covers. I mean, you're trying to market some hardcore military technology and I mean, what the hell do you put on the cover? Especially um, the AT4 here. Why? Like, all right, the M240G, well, I guess you could imagine this girl, woman, using this thing kind of if you really want to stretch your imagination. But she looks like she was just running a marathon. Or I guess um, a triathlon sh uh, shins, uh, shins. Since these do look like pants a cyclist would wear, but whatever. The cover seems to be very Japanese, I guess is the best way of putting that. And then the final thing I got is... Uh, what was this line again? Tamashi Buddies, uh, Sailor V. Because while she is my favorite of the bunch, and I figured, you know what, why not get them? It looked cute, wasn't too expensive, so it was a cute thing to just throw in there. And that's all for this month's new loot, with a lot of exciting things in it for me personally. I can't wait to start building either the Double X or the Victory Dash Gundam. I'm really not sure which one I will, which one I want to build first. The V Dash, it's got the hex ahead, but then the Double X, I mean, it looks so intimidating on the box art. It's got those beautiful uh, reflect reflector panels, which I keep wanting to call uh, solar panels. But this thing definitely is going to look badass. But then the Victory Dash is going to look very nice and sleek. I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to build first. And then for other stuff I really can't wait to build. Um, of course, the Bazooka with Miss Thryadlete. I mean, why shouldn't Thryadletes, Thryadletes have a um, Bazooka? Why not? Um, of course, system weapons, definitely something I'm gonna build really quickly. Um, the Goof Fly type, I've been waiting for that thing for so long, I totally want to build it now. And then, well, finally, the Zaku one, um, the Wing Gundam Zero, well, especially the Wing Gundam Zero Hono is going to go at the very back of the backlog. As I said, I really like the color scheme, but I not everything about the thing I really, really like. Um, like the whole aesthetic, it's got cool things, it's got a few minor things. I will see what I can do with that thing, but for the time being, I have a lot of other stuff I would way prefer to build over the Hono, such as, well, our Zaku 1. And now I'm thinking, I don't think, no, I haven't built any of the really super old Zaku 1s. I have built uh, the gym and the very old Gelgook. So I wonder how this thing is going to be in terms of quality. Yeah, another thing I'm, I'm really wondering about is how this is going to fit on the Gym Custom. Hopefully a little bit better than the M240G out of the box. But well, that's all for this video. Definitely leave a comment down below which one you would like to see first. The Double X, the Victory Dash Gundam and um, oh yeah, for the next review. It's definitely going to be the Gundam Mark III. I finished that and I've also found a time to finish the Gathre. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, the last few uh, new loot videos, I've had a tendency to say that, well, I'm running out of time, don't really have a lot of time to build stuff, but it's finally going to change a bit for a while. I finally have some more time to build stuff now, um, prepare some studies, prepare some studying stuff for the exams. So, at least for the next few weeks, I should have plenty of time uh, to build, well, plenty of time to build model kits in my spare time, which I now finally have again. So, um, I'm thinking maybe I should do something like a poll for uh, the next build slash reviews. Well, leave a comment down what you guys think about it, and see you guys next time.